the triangle choke. It's one of the highest percentage submissions in jiu-jitsu. And most of us already know this because, well, we've been caught there several different times throughout our training career. In this video, I'm gonna break down the biomechanics and the anatomy involved in creating an effective triangle choke in jiu-jitsu. The first structures we need to familiarize ourselves with with any choke is the carotid arteries. Now, the common carotid arteries have different origins. The left common carotid artery is a branch from the aortic arch, which gets its blood directly from the heart. The right common carotid artery's origin is the brachiocephalic trunk off of the aortic arch. Now, both of these common carotid arteries arteries bifurcate into two separate external and internal carotid arteries. Knowing this is important because right at the bifurcation of these two arteries sits the carotid bodies and baroreceptors that detect changes in pressure. These structures are ultimately what start the cascade of signals to our brains that lead to the loss of consciousness. So now that we know the vascular anatomy, let's talk about how we actually occlude the blood flow. And the first seems pretty intuitive. We're taking the big hamstring or adductor tendons of our medial and posterior thighs and applying pressure to one side of the neck. But as we just learned, we have an entirely unfazed carotid artery on the other side of the neck. Now it's very easy to hide that side of the cervical spine by either rotating or posturing up. And this is why having the arm in is a huge deal. We're actually using the big belly of the deltoid muscle, more specifically the anterior delt, to put pressure on that side of the neck. Now this motion of bringing the arm across the body is known as horizontal adduction. And the bigger the anterior delt at the shoulder, the better the choke will work. All right, the necessary anatomy of the person being choked is known. And the anatomy of the legs of the person doing the choking is known. All that's left is the biomechanics of the person doing the choking. We mentioned that the adductors or the hamstrings provide the choking force on one side. And horizontally adducting the shoulder creates the other choking force on the opposite side. Once the other leg is cinched and the triangle position is complete, the force here needs to be increased in order to further occlude the blood flow and increase the likelihood for the loss of consciousness. Most folks here, especially beginners, use a move called hip adduction. These muscles in the inner thigh contract to bring the knees together. At first glance, and when you first do the move, it seems like the right thing to do. But until the angle of force changes, it's not as tight as it could be. When we shift our hips and cut the angle, this allows us to use more hip extension for the leg on the neck and hip flexion on the side of the shoulder. So instead of the thighs being squeezed together, they're moving opposite one another in sort of a shearing movement. Now, once you get here, you've only got one more thing to achieve before you have the inescapable triangle. You got the blood flow occluded, you got the biomechanical advantage of cutting the angle, and now you have to make sure the cervical spine can extend. With cervical extension, there's more room to allow for blood to flow through the carotid arteries. So when we force our opponent into cervical flexion, we further decrease that space in the cervical spine, ensuring that we're doing everything we possibly can to make sure that they lose consciousness. So these are the biomechanical and anatomical aspects of the move that we know is the triangle choke. As we know, there are an infinite amount of variations that can occur within this movement. But now you at least know what's happening in the body when you try to sink this choke in. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.